Good morning. It is great to see you this morning and to be here with you this morning. A lovely day outside because it stopped raining a little bit, but a lovely day because it was raining. Right? There are parts of our country right now, our nation, that are in the midst of significant drought. So we continue to pray for them and uplift them and pray for uh, the rain for them. Maybe some of the rain that has just left here will go and join them. And so we give thanks for the rain as it waters our earth, this creation that God has entrusted to us. This morning we are going to, uh, maybe fittingly, as uh, has occurred overnight in this, uh, this morning, we're going to talk about storms. Right? Y'all have experienced storms, right? The literal kind of storms and other storms of life. And so we're going to uh, talk about that a little bit. Today is also a, a wonderful day as we celebrate Father's Day. So we celebrate our fathers and those who have... Um, been uh, father-like and mentors in our lives. We uh, give thanks for them and their role that they played in our lives. We also have, uh, it's a day of a weekend of celebrations, if you will, um, because we also have uh, a couple of wonderful, brilliant graduates with us this morning. So we are excited to celebrate you and to uh, lift you up for prayer and, and uh, sort of, you know, get excited about what your future plans are. So be thinking about and preparing for what you're going to tell us. Um, you got speeches, right? <laughs> don't don't worry. It only has to be about a 10 minute speech for each of you. Um, we also, um, uh, I am uh, excited to share with you that on Friday I was officially ordained, which is why I can wear this now. Uh, and uh, I give thanks for my mother-in-law who made this thing. And since it's Father's Day, you know, I thought uh, to wear it because this, uh, there's grapes on here and each of the grapes were actually made by fingerprints uh, of the family, uh, including my daughters. And so... Uh, that's, that's special for me. And so uh, I'm thankful for that. Uh, also, um, we have our graduates. We have Father's Day. I'm celebrating this wonderful achievement. And um, we also, uh, yesterday, we celebrated, some of us celebrated Juneteenth, which is a uh, celebration of freedom that goes back to 1866 when um, the Emancipation Proclamation and the news that the Civil War is over finally reached Galveston, Texas. Uh, and the slaves there were free. So we celebrate because it's another day of independence and freedom when Americans became free. And so we are thankful for that celebration as well. So as we continue on our service this morning, let us start first with our, our greeting. In the middle of life's storms, God is there. What happened? In the darkness and terror, God is with us. Rise up, people of God, for you are loved and saved. Thanks be to God who cares deeply for us. And, and we continue our, our series on when the Spirit moves. Uh, we have talked about, uh, you know, when the Spirit moves in our lives and what that means is the Spirit moves to unite us as we are born in the Spirit, as the Spirit uh, moves within our lives so that we are able to have rest and renewal and as we are able to grow. Um, and today we are going to talk about endurance in the Spirit. Endurance in the Spirit. Our guiding uh, theme, our theme verse for this series comes from Acts chapter 1. It's verse 8. When Jesus tells the disciples that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And as Jesus says this to his disciples, he says it to each of us. Who follow him and the, the names of the towns might be different but Jesus says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you so that you will be my witnesses in Carthage and Southern Pines in Boone in Kitty Hawk in San Francisco in Shanghai to all the ends of the earth insert place city town name there you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth 
As I said, we continue this morning with endurance in the spirit. And if you'd like to uh, open your, your phone app to the, the chapter and verse or your Bibles will be in Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 35. But let us go to God in prayer. Loving God, when we are inclined to worry or panic, speak with authority to us. Open our ears with the power of your Holy Spirit so that we may hear Jesus speak directly to us, so that our fears may be confronted and our faith reinstated. Through him and in him, let us spend our days and nights with the courage and peace of those who know they are being saved and sustained by an unwavering grace. Open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits so that your word may come alive within us and through us to all the ends of the earth. And to you be eternal glory and praise. Amen. Again, our scripture reading, if you'd like to turn to it, comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. You know, when I was a kid, I got excited about uh, spending time with my grandfather, my papa. And one of the things that most excited me, there were two things that really excited me. Number one, we would take trips to the eastern shore of Maryland and Snow Hill, and I would always have fun doing something out there. That's where I got my first job on the farm with my BB gun to keep the crows out of the corn. It's where I got the job to, uh, my grandfather had taken a lawnmower and had taken the mower part off, so it was kind of like my go-kart. And so he would put the big tub of water or pesticide on the back and I would drive it down the rows and stay between the, the crop and he would, you know, spray as I went. And I loved doing that. The other one was that we would go out on the boat. We'd get up before the sun woke up and we would go out on the boat. We had these lines on these hose reels and every six, eight, 10 feet, something like that, was tied a piece of chicken net. Mmm. And we would go out into the water, he lived on the water, and we would put this line down. On each end was an anchor and a buoy, so you knew where it was. And we would put it down all the way on its length. And then we would drop it, let it sit for a while, and uh, go put another one down or something like that and he had this rig on his boat and we had this special little tiny mower on it that would make it go very slow and he would pull up the line and put it on this rig and as we went slowly it would slowly pull the line up from the bottom now here was the thing when it came up sometimes that chicken neck had a blue crab on it and you had to take this big aluminum net get it and put it in the bushel basket. My grandfather was so good at this, there were times when he would be at the center console with one hand and net in the other. I was never that good. But we had a lot of fun times. I loved it so much. But I would be lying if I said there weren't a couple of times where I was worried or scared. When you're a youngster, you can be intimidated a little bit when you're getting close to the edge and the waves are rocking on the boat, maybe worried about falling in. Will the crabs get me? <laughs> the other time when I was somewhat uneasy was when we would head back home. Everything had been pulled up, we pulled the lines back up and my grandfather would take and just and uh, it's, it's something to see the, 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 the bow of the boat up in the air, the bow, right, the front? Yeah. Up in the air, but not seeing anything behind it. So it's almost like you don't know where you're going. And when all of a sudden you start to get that... For a, a young kid, that can be a little bit scary and intimidating too. Especially when you're sitting 
on your seat. <laughs> but I trusted my papa. I trusted him. And though there was the occasional trick that he would pull in cutting off the engine and say, oh, we ran out of gas. <laughs> in the end, we always made it back. We always made it back to shore. We always made it back to the dock where we'd tie it to his pier, take the crabs up. Sometimes we'd start steaming crabs right then and there. It was a great time. Well, he, I started helping him steam crabs. He would finish while I took a nap. But during this time, you know, it, 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 being out on the water, there were those times where, you know, it was intimidating, scary. But I trusted in my grandfather that we would get back. We would endure. I would endure whatever was going on and, and we would make it back. And we always did. Maybe sometimes a little bit late if the crabs were really running or sometimes a little bit early if they were sparse. But this morning, like I said, I'm going to read to you a story about some other folks who were a little distressed and in panic and intimidated and in fear on a boat in the middle of uh, some trying times. We're going to read beginning at verse 35 in the fourth chapter of, God, of the Gospel of Mark. It says, On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You see, these disciples are in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, where storms can pop up out of nowhere. They can, things can be calm one minute, and the next minute the wind comes in, and you've got a storm coming. It happens. Suddenly, there's a storm. And no doubt, of course, these were fishermen, right? So maybe they had experience with storms before. And yet when this storm comes, the wind blows against the boat. It says the waves crashed against the boat so much so it beat against the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. It was already filling with water. If you're unsure, that's a bad thing for boats. The boat was sinking. They thought they were dying. And so they go and find Jesus. And where's Jesus? In the midst of the disciples who are terrified. Some of them probably trying to hold on for dear life. Jesus is asleep on a cushion. Jesus is asleep on a cushion. And they wake him up with a question. And I often wonder how Jesus took this question. But they say to him, they say, teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? Don't you care that the boat is swamped? Don't you care that we're dying? We are going to die. We're going to sink. Don't you care? Often that's a question that we cry out to God. Don't you care? In this particular situation, I wonder how Jesus took it because we have previously read that Jesus speaks to the crowds and teaches in parables. But it also says that to the disciples, he explains everything. So what what feelings were there? For the disciples, number one, of course, terror and fear. But what was Jesus thinking when these disciples who had been with him, who he had explained things to say, don't. You care? 
Don't you care that we're dying, that we're sinking, that we're perishing? It says that Jesus got up, rebuked the storm, and calmed the winds. Peace be still. It says there was a dead silence. And of course, this begins by them going out in the evening. Imagine that for a moment, a dead silence. Almost as if the disciples are standing there, I imagine them going from this big storm and all of a sudden quiet. Even that sudden quiet was probably disturbing. But then they ask another question. They ask another question to break this dead silence. They say, who is this? The disciples who had been with Jesus, the disciples who had heard him teaching, had heard his explanations, they are still in awe and wonder. Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? this you know I think it's safe to say that this was not the only storm though that the disciples ever encountered on this lake of Galilee would you agree that there was probably more than one storm that they encountered it's it's a logical thing right if they are around this sea often and the storms come up suddenly out of nowhere, there's a likelihood, and many of them are fishermen, that at least some of these disciples, this was not the first nor the last storm on this lake that they would endure. But it's the only one we have in Scripture. That's the only one we hear that Jesus calms the storm. And so I wonder if in this moment, if the disciples even though they are still in awe, they have gone from don't you care to who is this? That creation obeys. This moment for them where Jesus has stilled the storm, has empowered them, has encouraged them, has given them the courage and bravery to face the storms that will come. I imagine maybe sometime later there's another storm. Maybe it's just as bad, maybe not so bad, maybe worse. And maybe Jesus is sleeping still, but they know this is a storm. But they also know Jesus is present with them. And despite how hard the wind might blow, or despite how big the waves might be, they know that Jesus is present. And even more so, they know that they are loved, and that yes, Jesus does care for them. And if need be, Jesus can call upon the storm to cease, the wind to stop, the waves to sink, and for silence to be present. They know, they've experienced this. And my guess is that others who have heard this story along the time frame have also been encouraged to face the storms that may have come along the Sea of Galilee, to stand up to the wind and the waves and knowing this story of what Jesus did when these disciples were in this perilous moment, they were encouraged and strengthened knowing that no matter what may come, no matter how fast the winds or how high the waves, that Jesus was, yes, even present with them. And see, friends, here's the thing, right? Storms come. As we saw last night and this morning, real storms come. Wind, rain, we've seen in our state where hurricanes have come, other places, tornadoes, tsunamis, they come. They come. But also, storms of life come. Trials, tribulations, trying times. Maybe it's a difficult time with your career or your job. 
Maybe it's a difficult time in relationships with your family or friends or with others. Maybe it's a difficult time in school. School's not difficult, right, youngins? <laughs> school is not difficult. These times come. They come to affect our mental part of our bodies, our physical bodies, and our spiritual lives. The storms come, and sometimes they're sudden, amen? Out of nowhere, sometimes the storms arise. You're good one day, and the next day, you're to pieces. Sometimes you can see the storms on the horizon and just see, you know, I, I, it's coming, I know. it. And just as this story and the remembrance of this story for the disciples encouraged them and strengthened them to face the storms and also and strengthened others to face the storms, this story too strengthens us. When Jesus gave the gift of the Holy Spirit, he told his disciples that I am sending someone to you, the advocate, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will teach you, who will remind you of everything that I have said and everything that I have done, including this story when I calmed the storm. And for us, living in the Spirit and seeing the Spirit move is knowing that even in the midst of the storms, that the Holy Spirit is moving in our lives. To remind us that Jesus is present with us. Even if it seems like, even if we feel like Jesus is napping on us, Jesus is still present with us. Even in the most difficult of storms. Even in the most difficult of storms, our Lord is present with us. And this is the endurance the perseverance and determination that the Holy Spirit works within us, reminding us of the presence of Christ with us. Because again, the storms come. And when they come, we can know because of this story that we will be okay. We will be okay. But I want you to hear me correctly, okay? Because when I say we will be okay, I don't want you to think that what I mean is that the storm will just disappear. Because Jesus did calm this storm, but we don't have scripture that tells us that he calmed the next dozen storms. But he certainly rode them out with the disciples. And in the midst of our storms, Jesus is present to calm the storms or to be present with us to ride them out. To be present during the fastest and hardest blowing winds and the biggest and the crashing waves. Jesus is present with us in those moments. Again, from Difficult storms at school, in careers, in relationships, in our health, in the biggest storm, even in death. You see, we see death as a complication, as a storm, and we might wonder how on earth we get through that storm. But you see, the thing is that Jesus has already been through this storm with the disciples, and he's already been through even the storm of death. He's been through the storm of losing loved ones. He's been through the storm of suffering. He's been through the storms of illness. He's been through the storms of insult and mockery. Jesus has been through the storms already, the same ones that you will face. He's been through the storms of temptation from Satan himself. Jesus has been through the storms, even the storm of death. And he has calmed that storm on behalf of us. So that even the storm of death is a passage from life to life. No matter what the storm may be that comes upon us. No matter how big or how small, 
No matter if we think that Jesus is sleeping or that Jesus is holding on tightly with us, whether Jesus stands up and rebukes the storm and it calms down to a dead silence right away, or whether we ride it out with him right at our side, maybe we're the ones who are sleeping while Jesus is holding on to the wheel at one hand and taking on the storm with the other. Jesus is with us in the storms. And because of that, no matter what happens, we will be okay. That is God's promise to you. That you will be okay. Sometimes it may not seem like it. Sometimes it may be hard to believe. But we will be okay. You will be okay. Because Christ is by your side. And the Spirit empowers you to endure. Thanks be to God that no matter what storms come, even the storm of death, that our Lord has faced it and faced it down on our behalf so that we will certainly be all right. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks that in your Holy Spirit, we are reminded of your words and your actions. We are reminded of how you have faced down the storms and how you continue to do so. We give you thanks for the power of the Advocate, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who comes and gives us endurance to face each storm, knowing that truly with your presence, we will be okay. Amen. We'd like to sing you a song that uh, when, when I was a kid, we would drive to the beach with our kids and my parents, and we would sing the song in the rounds. It's a very old song, and I looked it up, and it, it comes from the earliest known. It's attributed to a guy, his last name was Richie, and he came from Scotland and settled in Virginia in 1757. It's called Row, 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 Row. And I added a couple of, I added a tagline, and then I added a couple of verses to it. Uh, so this is how the version goes today.
We now come to our time of intercession where we pray for ourselves, for others, our community, and for our world. Again, we give thanks today for all the celebrations that we have had, and um, we lift up those in prayer who uh, are in need of healing, uh, who are in need of God's love and care. Let us now pray together. God of the sky and sea, your world brims with glory. You have set us in the midst of a garden and trusted its tending to us. We pray for our good earth and the wisdom to care for it well, that generations to come may enjoy its fruits and revel in its beauty. Unite us, Holy Spirit, so we may share God's love. God of the earthquake and the storm, your world is full of danger. Keep watch over your people and save them from despair. Strengthen and uphold them when trouble comes. Unite us, Holy Spirit, so we may share God's love. God of power and might, the rulers of this world do not always seek your wisdom. Guide all nations in the ways of peace and uphold the oppressed, even as we work and wait for your coming kingdom. Unite us, Holy Spirit. So we may share God's love. God of healing and comfort, pain and loss are all around. Soothe the frantic, embolden the fearful, ease the suffering of the sick, and give peace to all who grieve and hope to those facing death. Unite us, Holy Spirit. So we may share God's love. All knowing, all loving, and all caring God, we cannot always voice our hidden cares. Hear our silent prayers, even those without words. Unite us, Holy Spirit. With trust in your sustaining spirit, thanksgiving for your son's interceding, and confidence in your coming kingdom of justice, peace, and love, we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we get to have the opportunity to celebrate our graduates. And so uh, as our wonderful graduates make their way up here, don't forget your speeches, um, we, we give thanks for all of the graduates who have graduated this year, but also we want to recognize those who uh, graduated last year and due to the pandemic, we couldn't gather together to celebrate them. Also, if there is some sort of achievement that uh, you'd like to share from, a, uh, from yourself or a child or a niece or a nephew or whatever it is, while they make their way forward, why don't you just share it with us? Share your uh, wonderful blessings and achievements. There are some other graduates that uh, are unable to be with us from last year. We celebrate that Andy Hyman has graduated and is on to bigger and brighter things. Um, we also celebrate the uh, graduations of um, Valencia and Sebastian Moore, as well as Alyssa Wyckoff. 
We give thanks for uh, their graduations as well. And with us this morning, we have Elia and Natalia. And uh, congratulations! This was a, a really cool time for me because if some of you have noticed, they have their confirmation banners back there, which uh, you can take home with you today. Um, and so it was really cool to walk with them through graduation, to be a part of their baptism, and now for them to graduate and go on to bigger and greater things. I, I, they've already done so much bigger and greater things. So um, would you like to just step forward one at a time and share with us, Not to, you don't have to give a speech, just share with us what, what's, uh, what's on the horizon for you. We're planning on going to Sandhills for two years to get an associate's. And then, and then uh, we're planning on transferring to ECU for nursing. So. Yes. Yeah. Right. Now you do have different fields of nursing that you're interested in, uh, right? Yes. yes. I would like to be um, a pediatric oncologist. I would like to be a nurse anesthetist. All right. Very good. Wonderful. Well, we are glad to have them here. And uh, we, we just celebrate both of you for your accomplishments. And uh, we know that uh, like, uh, like our other graduates, they are going to be on to bigger and better things as they go on to represent uh, Carthage and Carthage United Methodist Church. And uh, let us, uh, can we pray God's blessing upon you all? You don't mind that, right? I hope not because you were in confirmation, so... All right, why don't you come over here to the middle. If you all would just reach out your hand upon them, and we're going to pray a blessing over them. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks today for Elia and Natalia, for Andy and Alyssa, for Valencia and Sebastian, and for all their hard work that they have put in over the years to get them to this point of graduation. We give thanks for their study. We give thanks for their athleticism. We give thanks for their kindness in all the ways, for their talent in music and sports, in all the ways that these young people have lived their lives, Lord. We give thanks for you, for being in the midst of it, for being there in their lives during the storms and during the calm. We ask for your presence to go with them wherever they go, as we know you will. In fact, we know that you have prepared the way for them. So may your presence, O oh Lord, guide them and lead them in your wisdom. And may they remember that even when storms may come, that you are present with them. That you will calm the storms, or you'll be right by their side to ride them out. And so in that, they can take confidence that with you, all things... All manner of things shall be well. For we pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who calms the storms of our lives and who is there with us to ride them out. Amen. 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 Now, I do have a special gift for y'all. It just hasn't come in the mail yet. So we will bless that gift and get it to you when it comes in the mail. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Can you explain the ribbons now real quick? Uh, so we have this one for National Honor Society, this one for North Carolina High School Scholars, and then this one for graduating cum laude. Very nice. Very nice. Wonderful. And the, the, the one right here that you have? Oh. <laughs> That's just me. She dyed her hair. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Well, we give thanks to them. Let's give them a round of applause one more time. We now come to the uh, time of our service where we give thanks for generosity. We give thanks for the generosity that God has shown us in that all things that we have. What do we have that has not been given to us? That God, all good things come from God. And so we give thanks for this. 
We give thanks for generosity. We give thanks for the ways that the Holy Spirit has empowered us to be generous to others and how the Holy Spirit has empowered others to be generous to us. And so we return all things, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. We return it to God for blessing and multiplication. And we do so through praise and prayer. especially for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life and through his life, death and resurrection offers to us a share in his victory, a share in that calm storm that we might too dine at your banquet table, your grand feast in your heavenly kingdom. We give you thanks, Lord, and we pray that all of these ways of generosity, that they will be used within this world that you will use them, bless them and multiply them so that others might come to know your love and care, so that others might know your presence with them through the ups and the downs, the calms and the storms. We pray, Lord, and we give to you all things, especially we give to our own lives as holy and living sacrifices that we might join with you in the work that you are doing so that your world might be transformed and that peace might become a reality and that calm might come to the lives of all, here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Now friends, storms will come. I don't have to say that again, but I will. Storms will come. Suddenly, or maybe predictably off the horizon. But when they come, no matter how high the waves, no matter how hard the wind blows, no matter how much it might seem like you're perishing or that your boat is already swamped, know this, that the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you. And that whatever storm you face, our Lord has faced it, defeated it, and calmed it on your behalf. That you can and will be okay through the storm. That Jesus will calm it in a moment or ride it out with you. And all matter of things shall be well. So go with peace and strength and may the Holy Spirit give you the power of endurance through the presence of Christ always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.